Hello. Today is the 10th of December, 2022. Let's do our disclaimer, go over our calls and make some predictions. And since it's the weekend, we like to take a look at the long-term picture. This is my trading plan for Monday, which should be December 12th. Please remember my calls can be completely wrong and any trade you make should be at your own risk. Friday's pattern we called for the one with the early low and that's what this is. Monday should also have the early low. The pattern tends to be a positive pattern with an early low and a late high and usually it's a bullish pattern. Usually this late high is going to be over uh, the midday highs and close near the high of the day. If you can't clear the midday highs or even the early highs, that's negative stuff. Here's what we said. We said uh, typically it's a rally day with a final hour high, but if it's a bearish day instead, more weakness should follow in subsequent days. Now, of course, what counts isn't where we close, what counts is where we open Monday. So there is support here. And if support holds and you gap up and take this high out, all that negativity goes away. We'll see some support in just a minute, but I think it's likely to break and probably break hard. Early on, MJT gave a sell signal. It didn't tell the next move. It did say this rally was going to be false and that we'd eventually trade lower, which we certainly did. We got an ultimate, we got an ultimate high signal here and we've gone high enough to satisfy it. So this isn't going to tell us anything else. Well, here's a still, here's a diamond, here's a still. You've got support at the origin of the left still. Support doesn't have to hold, but just remember when support breaks, if it breaks, it breaks hard. Here's our long-term count. We have a number of figures, which could be the end of the bear market. None of them are guaranteed. All of them are plausible. And the one we're working with now is that we slightly undercut this low and form a 2B bottom. Doesn't mean it's right, but that's our working assumption that we'll hit a low somewhere in the 3400s. Now we, we, we have a break of a lower blue trend line. And we should go at some point at least 225 handles under that line, which is quite a drop. We also have a rising wedge. It's a negative pattern. And the target is to undercut the low of the wedge, which means undercutting the year's low. Now let's take a look at this green trend line with a number of hits. It goes all the way back to the 2020 low. So this is a major trend line that's lasted close to three years. These, these t targets suggest we're going to break through at some time. Now, right now, this is support. So in addition to the diamond on stilts, having support at the origin of the left stilt, we do have support from this trend line. Just remember, if support breaks, it breaks hard. It hasn't broken yet. Here's our wave count once again. If gray C is equal to gray A, we get around 3477 and that's one reasonable target. I'm not going to claim it's the only one, but you would just undercut this low and that could mark the end of the bear market.
Now this was the count I've been using. Here's your diamond on stilts, and we have supported the origin of the left stilt. Now this would have us one, two. Clearly this is third wave action. Now we had a number of possible wave counts we talked about Thursday evening. We said it was possible this was the end of blue four. And um, frankly, in uh, early action, that looked plausible to me because futures were way up here. And then when the PPI came out, they dropped way down here. Now, one of the things that we said was that the reaction to the PPI should let us know what's going to happen. And when you have a big drop like this, all the European traders who were going long suddenly are sitting with huge losses. A late friend of mine named Bill Blount called this the European trap. So all these longs are trapped up here. They went long overnight and now they have big losses. And when you rally like this, these folks are anxious to get out with whatever money they can. So it creates a pool of sellers right up here. In addition, when this normally bullish pattern can't close near its, its high, as I've said, it's uh, trouble. Now, one wave count we had was this being A, B, and then a C up here to around 40, 30. I don't think that's going to happen. The other wave count we had was this being four. And when we went over this high, that got killed. So we now have this possible wave count with this being one, two, three, four, and we're in wave five. And there's nothing wrong with this count. Now, when I get this count, what I try to do is to find a place where blue five has some kind of Fibonacci relationship, either with blue three or blue one or blue one through three. And I just can't come up with one. Doesn't mean the count's wrong, but you have to consider the potential that this isn't the right count. What if this is the right count? What if we're still in wave blue three? What if that's one and that's two, and that's one of three, and that's two of three, and what if we're in wave three of three down right now? This would be a third wave of multiple, de multiple degree. And that's when crashes happen. And just because you're in a wave three of multiple degree, you don't have to crash. But today is Christopher Caroline's F25 days. And I'm not going to go over all his system, but the rule is the higher this number is the bigger the crash is if you crash you don't have to crash on his days but if it's one of his days and you're in a wave three of three of multiple degree if that's true the elements for a crash are certainly present and particularly if you gap under all that support we showed there's no reason why you couldn't crash Well, how high could, how low could we go? Well, here's the wall with gap from last month. Here's your stilt. Here's your diamond. If we crash, there's support at the origin of the left stilt, which is around 200 handles under where we are now. And it's also a Fibonacci target of the prior consolidation. So if we gap down smartly Monday, which hasn't happened yet, I could see us dropping at least 200 handles. I don't like to call for crashes and I'm not saying a crash will happen because we haven't broken support yet. Support could still hold. When we open up here, the whole idea is killed. But if we, if we gap down Monday, and I think that's a very likely thing, all the elements for a crash are there. Well, Monday's pattern is really low. It could still gap up. Friday's action was very negative. The European trap created bag holders well over Friday's low. They should be anxious sellers in any recovery. 
Friday's daily pattern usually is a bullish pattern. The early weakness failure of the afternoon to overtake early highs, let alone close near highs, and late sell-off all argue for a drop on Monday, probably by gapping down. We had that wall into the close, but uh, I'm going to say there's support at the Friday's close and the wall into the close can reverse. But usually a drop into the close on a Friday follows through. You gap up smartly instead, it's very positive because supports held. But if you, that's, what, that's not what usually happens when you drop into a close on Friday. Usually it follows through. It's likely we gap down Monday, very likely. And if we do, the elements for a crash are present. It doesn't guarantee a crash will occur, but I think it would be very likely to occur. And as always, you gap up smartly and the calls kill before the open. So, Monday's, Monday's pattern has the early low. We're right at support. This is a very negative pattern on Friday. The wave count and the calendar all make it plausible that if we gap down on Monday, there's a strong likelihood it's going to be a crash day. And that's today's call.